please join me in extending a warm welcome to Cindy Pianalto. Thank you, Dick, for that nice introduction. Um, but I have to make one correction. Uh, Dick started his career here as an economist. I was a research assistant, and there, and but I but I have over the, uh, the I was right out of undergraduate school, um, and um, but we we it's an interesting organization uh, because you do develop such strong bonds and great friendships, and um, so many of us that work together here at that time um, still. Are, um, are good friends and good colleagues. So it's a pleasure to, to be on this program with Dick. And it's a pleasure uh, to, for me to be here at this conference and have the opportunity to, to address all of you this morning. And, it, and it's a, an honor for the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland to sponsor this conference with the Office of Financial Research. And uh, they, uh, we've been talking about the the numerous interests that we have in common, and, and this is a great opportunity for us to start sharing and collaborating. I'd also like to thank the Federal Reserve Board of Governors um, and the Office of Financial Stability, Policy, and Research for their support in hosting this event. You know, and I recognize that we're all here because we have a common interest and a concern for preserving the stability of our nation's financial system. And partnerships um, like this among the regulatory agencies, I, I know, will enhance our ability to, to be successful in maintaining financial stability over the long run. You know, as I thought about my remarks uh, today, I reflected on the parallels between the evolution of monetary policy towards greater transparency over the last two decades and the evolution of financial stability policy towards greater transparency following the most recent financial crisis. You know, I can't help but acknowledge the fact that there are also parallels between the loss of credibility that monetary policymakers faced in the 1970s and the situation that financial uh, regulators faced following the financial crisis. Both situations triggered a process of credibility rebuilding that required greater transparency. Today, we all recognized the critical role that transparency has come to play in conducting monetary policy. Going forward, I think that transparency can also play a critical role in conducting financial stability policy. In the aftermath of the Great Recession, the Dodd-Frank Act gave financial regulators greater authority to address issues that could lead to financial instability. Financial regulators and supervisors should use transparency as a means to more effectively identify, communicate, and mitigate risks in the financial system. So in my remarks today, I'm going to shortly um, review the evolution of the FOMC's in efforts to increase uh, transparency. But um, most importantly, I'm going to discuss how greater transparency can promote financial stability. And I will give a few suggestions for some additional steps that regulators could take to increase transparency. As president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland and a participant on the Federal Open Market Committee, I see the similarities in how the FOMC has implemented greater transparency in conducting monetary policy and how regulators can use greater transparency in conducting financial stability policy. Specifically, uh, the FOMC has greatly increased our communication on two fronts. First, uh, the information that we share with the public about our monetary policy decisions, and second, in the expectations that we set for policy actions that we'll take over time and how we expect those actions to affect economic conditions. Congress gave the Federal Reserve uh, what we call our dual mandate of maximum employment and stable prices. This dual mandate that Congress gave us is not specific, but over time, the FOMC has come to recognize that by making our goals more explicit, 
that that can help us achieve those goals. So today, the FOMC states that the longer run inflation goal, most consistent with the committee's price stability mandate, is 2%. Uh, the FOMC also communicates that the central tendency of the FOMC's participants um, are estimates for the longer run unemployment that we think is consistent with the maximum employment uh, uh, mandate. Uh, the current range is 5.2 to 6 percent. So even though Congress gave us these broader mandates, we as a committee have made them more specific. In the Dodd-Frank Act, Congress has established the statutory objective of promoting financial stability of the United States. This mandate is also not specific. But nevertheless, I believe that it will become more meaningful if financial regulators make it more explicit over time. When I joined the Central Bank or the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland 30 years ago, central bankers around the world were very closed mouth about monetary policy. Uh, central bankers believed that there was limited potential benefit and they believed that there was considerable risk to greater transparency. The conventional wisdom was that making information about monetary policy uh, more transparent risked negative market reactions. Furthermore, policymakers believe that making information about the likely FOMC policy actions more transparent, that that might limit our ability to react to, uh, to changes or to, uh, to conduct different policy if uh, that became warranted. In time, however, um, central bankers recognize the important role that expectations play. And, is, uh, and especially how important uh, the, that role of expectations are in financial markets. So we began to rely more heavily on forward guidance to improve the effectiveness of monetary policy. The FOMC's first effort towards greater transparency came in February of 1994, which was the first time that the committee actually released a statement about the actions the committee took. At that time, the, the FOMC issued a brief statement, it was only four sentences long, uh, following the meeting, and announced that there had been a policy change. But they provided little other detail. In the last decade, the trend toward greater transparency has accelerated, and the FOMC now uses, uh, utilizes several communication strategies, ranging from being more precise about the economic conditions that we're trying to achieve, and also, uh, to, uh, also ranging from that, just trying to tell you about the economic conditions we're trying to achieve, but also then um, explaining the factors that will influence future policy actions. Over the past two decades, the evolution of the FOMC's communications has made monetary policy more effective by providing more information about the committee's future actions. Financial markets adjust more quickly and more smoothly to new information when market participants understand what it is we are trying to achieve, what our goals are, and the likely actions that we will take to achieve those goals. More transparency has not created significant problems for the FOMC. Quite the contrary, more transparency has le led to more effective monetary policy. So for the, for the same reasons, I believe that providing enhanced information about financial firms and greater explanations for the future actions of financial regulators, that can make, also make the financial stability policies more effective. I believe that we would all agree that the recent financial crisis developed in large part due both to a lack of information transparency and a lack of regulatory transparency. By information transparency, I mean the, the transparency of information about individual firms and the financial system. 